Hello, folks. It's time for Up Amps. Today, we're going to look at summing amplifiers. What the heck is a summing amplifier? Well, there's applications where we need multiple inputs. We want to combine them up, one common output. Two good examples. One, we're looking at sensors. We have sensor signals. We want to combine them up into one common signal. For example, we have multiple temperature sensors, and I'm trying to get an, an idea of an average value. Another idea would be uh, an audio combination. I have multiple uh, microphones, let's say, or, or signal sources, and I want to get them down into a single signal, right? one common signal. So a summing amplifier is based on parallel, parallel negative feedback. This is one way of doing it. You can also make these with series parallel. Uh, there are certain advantages to that. But we're going to look at this basic parallel parallel. So it's a common sort of configuration. And you might recall that our uh, parallel parallel looks like this. For the feedback resistor. RF. All right, so here's our output over here. There's RF. So maybe I hang a load resistor out here, right? That's my V out. And this is designed for current summing. Now, because it's current summing, this point right here, our virtual ground, that's an ideal summing node. Now, we've already looked at the case where we could just put one resistor in here, an RI, and then the input voltage would basically drop across that resistor because that's our virtual ground. That would create an input current, and because the currents into and out of the uh, op amp plus and minus terminals are ideally zero, then all of that current flows through RF that establishes the voltage. And don't forget, because this is ground, the drop across the RF is essentially the reverse, the negation of the load voltage. So we could say that V out is basically equal to a negative V of RF. Now, we can hook up multiple resistors with multiple inputs to feed this one point. That's our ideal current summing node. So I'm just going to draw a few of them here. And so they're all coming into this same point. So let's just draw four of them. What the heck? So I'm going to call this V1, V2, V3, V4. And then instead of Ri, I'm just going to call them R1, R2, R3, R4. Right, so you could have two channels, you could have three channels, four channels, five channels. So I'm just drawing four. Well, here's what ends up happening. Because this is virtual ground, all of V1 drops across R1, that creates an input current. Then all of V2 drops across R2. And that creates its own current, right? So that current comes in here to this node, and it's going to pass through RF. Meanwhile, R3, same thing. There's a drop across R3 based on V3, so that current kind of comes in, and it will also combine and go through there. And guess what happens with R4? All of V4 drops across R4, so that creates an input current, and the same thing, that sums in with these others. And I just happen to be showing a positive polarity here, as if we had four DC voltages, right? Um, but of course, these could be AC signals. But that's our reference polarity. So those four currents in this case, they just sum up, they all flow through RF, and we get an output. So there's a couple different ways of looking at this. Um, the obvious thing is you just think of it as kind of like four separate inverting voltage amplifiers, and their signals are added. Right? That's sort of like a, a very basic way of looking at it uh, versus this idea of, oh, it's just going to sum the currents. You know, however, however it makes sense to you. All right? I mean, either way is sort of a valid uh, perspective. But we can write an equation. What is V out? Well, V out is essentially each individual input times its Gain. There's nothing that says R1 has to equal R2, R3, and R4. These can all be different. They could be the same. 
if they are the same, then the individual gains will all be identical. In other words, it'll be RF over R1, RF over R2, RF over R3, RF over R4. And if all those resistors are the same, they all get the same gain. So we call that an equally weighted summing amplifier, right? All channels have the same voltage gain. But we could make them different, in which case we call that a weighted summing amplifier, weighted gain. So some channels are more important than the others, so to speak. So what do we wind up with? Well, you know, generally speaking, because they're all inverting, but we are going to add them, we say that um, we'll get a negative A1 times V1. And then that will be added to A2 times V2. And A1 and A2 here, I'm just looking at um, you know, the magnitudes. I've basically pulled the minus sign out. A3, V3, and so on and so forth, right? So we, in our case, we would have a V4 um, and an A4. You, know, you could write that as a little summation if you prefer. You know, we could say from N equals 1 to the total number of channels or inputs, however you want to look at that, okay, of A, N, V, N. Okay. All right, so as an example, let's just do a simple one over here. We'll, um, I'm going to mix some DC and AC just to, just to kind of make it a little bit visually more interesting. So I'm going to put a 10K over here. Um, V1, I'm going to put in a 1K. V2, I'm going to put in a 2K, where this is going to be unweighted, or excuse me weighted and then I'm going to put a 5k over here and this is v3 all right so for v1 I'm going to put in um, one volt DC and for v2 I'm going to put in oh let's see what's a good number how about three volts DC uh, negative three volts DC don't want them to all be in the same direction and then V3, I'm going to make that, hmm, let's call that a uh, one volt peak sign. All right, at a modest frequency, you know, 100 hertz or something. All right, so what I would do is figure out gain one. So the gain for this channel would be RF over RI, 10K over 1K which is 10, 10 inverting, of course. Um, so that's going to be 1 volt times negative 10. So that leads us to negative 10 volts DC. That's the contribution of V1. V2's contribution, same equation, but now we have 10K over 2K. And so I have a gain of negative 5. Multiply that by the negative 3, and you get positive 15 volts DC. Now, those two things are going to partially cancel, right? This is going to give you plus 5 volts DC for these two pieces. Then I've got my 1 volt peak sign. That thing has a gain of 10K over 5K. So negative 2. Negative 2 times the 1 volt. So that's a 1 volt peak sign that's inverted. Excuse me. A 2 volt peak sign that is inverted. All right, so what do we wind up with? Well, what we wind up with, if we plotted this, if we looked at it on a scope, what we see is a 5 volt DC offset, you know, up here somewhere. I'll just call that 5 volts. And uh, a 2 volt peak sine wave, which is inverted. So if I'm going to use the origin as my reference point, all right, that's going to be something like this. So that's so this is going to peak up here at seven volts because we got the five volt offset plus the two volt peak. So that's going to be seven. And then this trough, this dip down here would be the five volts offset with negative two, in other words, three volts. All right, so that's going to be three, and up here is going to be seven, and right in the middle is five. So it just adds these up. All right, and, and inverts, of course. All right, don't forget the minus sign. Inverting summing amplifier. 
The text does talk about a non-inverting summing, summing amplifier, which has certain advantages, but this is a fairly straightforward uh, configuration, and it's nice because it's, you know, it's based on this parallel-parallel uh, uh, feedback, and it, you know, works, works pretty well. So here we have, uh, like I said, a, a weighted gain. Each channel has its own gain. And uh, you know, in this case, three signals. And we just see the combination here at the output. Here's a question for you. What's the input impedance of this amplifier? Well, it's a trick question because there is no singular input impedance. There's three inputs. Each one has its own input impedance, right? The input impedance for channel 1 is 1K. The input impedance for channel 2 is 2K. The input impedance for channel 3 is 5K. Trick question. All right. Now, I did mention at the outset that you might consider using something like this uh, you know, for combining signals like audio signals. This would not by itself make a particularly good mixer, audio mixer. Um, there are multiple issues over here. First of all, we don't have a, uh, a way of controlling the gain, right? We want to be able to turn a channel completely off. And, you know, this just has fixed gains, okay? And you might think, well, I could make these things, uh, you know, rheostats by adjusting uh, the value here. You know, maybe I had like uh, 10K pots, let's say, and we just adjust them. In other words, we put in something like this. All right, so here's the here's the input of the op amp, right? And I just make this a 10k pot, um, you know, hooked up as a rheostat. And you could say, well, so this resistor is going to go up and down, right? That's the RI value, so I can change the gain that way. Yeah, you can, but a couple of problems. You know, the, the first one is you can't get um, this thing to 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 uh, go down to zero, right? You can't turn off the channel. In other words can't turn the volume down to zero. Um, at maximum resistance, you have the minimum gain. But, okay, so if this is 10K instead of 1K, well, now you got to gain a one. You know, you're not turning it off. You, so you can kind of turn it down a little bit, but you can't turn it off. Um, another issue is that as you change gain, you actually change the input impedance. And that might be an issue for whatever comes before this. It turns out you also change frequency response, as we'll, we'll see. Um, so there are definitely some, some limitations with this thing. You also don't have a way of, an easy, good way of controlling the gain for the whole system. Again, you could try to turn this into a potentiometer, um, but you don't have any way of turning everything off. It'd be like having a volume control that goes from, you know, 10 to 8 or 10 to 6. It doesn't, you know, go down to zero. Well, that's definitely a problem. So there are, there are ways around that. Um, the text does detail some of those things. But there are plenty of applications where you just want to sum multiple signals and they're fixed. In other words, their gain characteristics are fixed. You just put the signals in, you get your output, and off you go, right? So you can use this as sort of uh, as is for something like that, or you can use it as sort of a stepping stone into something that's a little bit fancier, okay? All right, so summing amplifier, parallel, parallel. There you go.